You ready for this, Kev? folks we've made it it is quarter past 11 that's going to give us about five hours solid daylight to get ourselves up there let's get, you it. Let's get suited and booted mate Shooted and booted. so the plan today is a summit camp on Kruik Isha and then tomorrow we're going to head up Skur Isha I think I've got those two round the right way. Now these are two corbets near the grey quarries and they're absolutely dwarfed by the bigger Munro's. So I'm hoping that we get some really good views if the weather plays ball. You may enter. First things first though, we need to visit her, the wee minister. And here he is. Sorry, mate. Hello, master. <sighs> Can I interest you in a Christmas tree? Much. Got these minis for a fiver, Ooh. slightly taller ones are tenner, and the ones at the back, twenty. It's middle of November, mate. That's a good price. However, if you just keep on walking, I'm going to pull out my shovel. I'll phone the police. <laughs> I'll phone the police on you. <laughs> I tell you what, for the middle of November, it is seriously mild. And as you can see, I've even got my baldy bonts out. Seven degrees in the car on the way up. So that there, folks, is the first target of the day. Right, folks, I think we're going to have a change of plan. It's like, it's ten past twelve. And if you get up to the summit, probably be at the back of one. It's just going to be three hours of doing nothing. So what we're going to do is reverse the route and do Skur Inshur first and then walk over to the one we're going to camp on. That'll take longer but it means less time in the tent and I think we've got enough daylight in the bank four hours I think it's getting dark just after four at the moment That's us at the top of the track now. This weaves its way down to the Larry Leekak Boffy. We are going to head over that way towards the Bialach. It's going to be bog dodging here. Right, to folks, we've uh, just had rap o'clock. We've dumped the packs and we're going to head up this Corbett now, the rocky one, Rocky Balboa. I'm really disappointed with myself though. Uh, my camera went for a dip into the stream and my road wireless go seems to be knackered. It just switched itself on and it worked briefly 
and then it just died on me, so it looks proper goosed. The DJI should be alright. I'm not going to try it till later, so I've reverted to the phone now. Really annoyed at myself. But anyway, let's get up this Corbett. Right, there's Kev at the summit just before me. Filming you, filming me. Right to folks, the time is quarter to three, back our packs, and the next objective is getting over there. So we've got just over an hour to boost up there and get pitched. Let's go. On the way down off that Corbett, Kevin dislodged a boulder and he didn't quite get out of the way. And that wee, wee graze, I think it's going to bruise me, eh? Ah, it'll bruise alright. Let me take the full force now. Could have been worse, mate, it could have whacked your knee. Uh, so, Crook Isha is the higher of the two Corbett's. I believe this one is uh, 859 metres. That one over there we just did. Uh, is 809, so a 50 metre advantage on this one. Right, yo, folks, we are making good progress. There's a water supply just there, looks a bit dodgy, and the summit is dead ahead of me. Whew. About another 50 metres to go. Current scenes, rather nice. Well, well, well. The sun is just about to set. We've got a little mini inversion here. That looks like the summit cairn. This little one looks a little bit higher. Righty old folks, we've just dropped about 20 metres off the summit. We've just found this little bit to pitch in. There's the views. Sun sets in five minutes, so I'm going to crack on. Righty old folks, it's good to be in the tent, all warm. Your morale always lifts once you get out of that cold wind. Got the stove on for dinner. For starters, I have some curry noodles from B&M's and COP26 finished yesterday, so I've got this nice dolphin-friendly polystyrene tub. Not the best. My little road microphone setup that dropped in the water. It's actually on. It's working. But I can't switch it off, so the battery's going to run down. I might be lucky, I'm putting it in my pocket and hopefully the heat dries it out, but that was unfortunate, like, really annoyed. <laughs> For my 40th birthday, I got a, a sleeping quilt and I've been using it for the last few wild camps. I've not mentioned it yet because I wanted to test it out. And so far, so good, but every time I've used it, it's always been like well above uh, 10 degrees. So tonight, imagine it'll probably drop down to about 3-4 degrees, so it'll give it a good proper test. It's rated down to minus 6 and it is the Lightened Equipment Enigma. So uh, yeah, I'll see how I get on with that. I made a review in the house, I've not posted it because it's more sort of initial thoughts, but if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments section below and I'll certainly post it up so you can have a nosy. But anyways, that's me boiling, so I'm going to get some scran on the go because I am starving. <clears throat> Super boss, by the way. These are magic. Right, yo, folks. Uh, I've just finished the live chat with Kev. I don't know if you joined in, but if you did, thanks very much. It was a good laugh. Hopefully, nothing too controversial. 
It was a bit pixelated though because the 4G wasn't very good from Roybridge here, but it was a good laugh, everybody seemed to enjoy it, so that was good. But anyways, I'm going to call it a night and I shall bring you back in the morning, so catch you then. Cheers. Good morning, campers. Oh man, didn't get much sleep last night from about 1 in the morning to about 5, 6 in the morning. It's just been really windy. <clears throat> I'm guesstimating 15 to 20 mile an hour and then maybe gusts up to 30 mile an hour. It's hard to say, you never know, eh? Got the little doofer for measuring it. It was forecasted for about 15 miles per hour. Anyways, the um, the quilt performed well. It stayed pretty much five degrees throughout the whole night and been absolutely toasty, so that's good. But I'm gonna fire up some scran and uh, think about packing up. It's 20 to 8. <laughs> So it's really just the usual porridge in a bag and my favourite coffee for wild camping. These are fantastic. Right folks, it's like pea soup outside and I'm getting pressure off of Kevin to pack up because he's well ahead. So I'm going to wrap this one up and I shall see you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>